Good morning. Welcome to worship at First Lutheran. We're happy to have you here. Welcome to our visitors with us today. Uh, everyone, good to have everyone here. Today is our Bread for the World Offering of Letters Sunday, and we're uh, going to be doing what's called advocacy. We're, our our uh, Evangelism and Mission Committee made the decision that because of the pandemic this year, instead of doing our Church Without Walls as we usually do, we would do something a little different. And uh, But we hope and think will be equally important and maybe even... Uh, impact more lives than we could have otherwise. So we're going to join thousands of Christians around the country today who are writing letters to legislators, our legislators, in order to urge them to pass legislation that can uh, improve nutrition for elderly people, for children, for families, for men and women uh, in our country and also around the world. And Bread for the World, if you didn't know, was started by a Lutheran clergy person about 50 years ago, um, Art Simon. And today is the 50th year that it's been in existence. Um, it's nonpartisan, non-denominational. And uh, we will be telling you a little bit more about this. You should have received a packet by now. Our famous fall dinner is back by popular demand so that on November 4th, a Wednesday, uh, from 4.30 to 7, there will be a ham dinner with all the trimmings. It will be takeout. So you can come, you can uh, uh, just take it out and eat back at home or in your car if you want to. Um, 4.30 to 7 on November 4th. Our silent auction is also available through our website um, and also, it's available in the church narthex or foyer downstairs. Today, as you can see, we have a lot of olive wood carvings that are on the tables. These are crafted by uh, people in Bethlehem, in Palestine, Palestinian territory. Um, there are Christian families that depend on their income from olive wood carvings. And so we encourage you to take a look at these today. They make great gifts for Christmas, for Thanksgiving, baptisms, confirmations, or what have you. And all of the proceeds go to those carving families. On Tuesday at 5 p.m., we're going to be having a task force meeting on reopening indoor worship. So this Tuesday at 5 p.m., and... Weather permitting, we'll just meet right out here on the lawn. It looks like it should be a pretty nice day from the weather forecast. So that's this Tuesday. We invite anybody to come to this meeting, especially if you have medical background, but it, anybody is welcome to come at 5 p.m. And then first communion instruction today, following our worship uh, in the fellowship hall. So that's for fifth and sixth graders and a parent or parents. Also today, I want to uh, offer on behalf of our congregation sympathy to Bob Heck upon news of the death of Bob's brother Mark on Thursday in a traffic accident. Our sympathy, Bob and family. Also, Gene Richards, whose brother John Wolf died um, this week. So our sympathy to Gene and family. And also our sympathy to Justin Anderson, whose mother died this past week, uh, Justin and Lori Anderson. Our prayers are with you. Let's continue our worship now with our confession and forgiveness. Please stand and let us worship our God. We pause for a moment to center ourselves as we prepare to worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for Jesus' sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, by his authority, I declare to you, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with Scripture readings.
Our first reading today from the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, 8 and 9. Speak out for those those who cannot speak, for the rights of all the destitute. Speak out, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. Word of God, word of life. Psalm 146, please read with me responsively. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help (coughs) is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. I invite you to stand for the gospel acclamation. shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. Listen to the Holy Gospel from Luke chapter 10. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan while traveling came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated and invite uh, Jenny to come up. Test? Okay, this is working. A young mother, only 22 years old, sat on the edge of a hospital bed. Her six-week-old daughter swaddled tightly to her chest. Mother and daughter had been inseparable, bound by the skin-to-skin contact since birth, when the baby weighed just 900 grams, or slightly less than two pounds. She constantly needed her mom's warmth and milk. I'm Gita, the mother announced to a group of visitors. 
Her daughter didn't have a name yet. Gita said she wanted to wait until she knew her baby would survive. She was playing a board game, Snakes and Ladders, with another mother who also cradled a low birth weight child. Gita was in high spirits. I've won three out of four games, she said. But there was a greater reason for her joy. Her daughter had been weighed again that morning, and the news was encouraging. She is 1,730 grams now, Gita proclaimed with great pride. The baby's birth weight had nearly doubled. In India's maternity wards, the scales tell the story of the country's and the world's battle against malnutrition. Malnutrition remains a leading cause of globally, a leading cause globally of nearly half of all the deaths of children under the age of five. Last year, Bread for the World focused its annual offering of letters on global nutrition so mothers and children could get the foods they needed to, le to lead healthy and fulfilling lives. Because of your advocacy, advocacy, both the House and Senate introduced its own version of a global nutrition resolution. The bipartisan resolutions passed out of their respective communities unanimously and are now awaiting passage in the House and Senate. Last year, Congress passed legislation to increase global nutrition funding by $5 million for a total of $150 million, demonstrating the substantial support bread members have fostered on Capitol Hill for global nutrition. In 2020, bread will again focus on nutrition. In addition to continuing our advocacy work around global nutrition, we will also turn our attention to those experiencing hunger in the United States. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for the one in seven children in our country who lives in a family that struggles to get enough to eat. Grant patience and wisdom to parents who work so hard to see that their children have, have the food they need to grow and learn. Amen. Thank you, Jenny. Gina, whom Jenny just talked about, is an example of a woman and her child who have benefited from the work of Bread for the World. And we know that Lutheran World Relief and other groups have made a real difference as well. Our world has changed dramatically in the last seven months, as we all know. With COVID-19, many businesses have been struggling or had to close. Millions of people in our country are unemployed. Um, many have had reduced hours in their jobs. Others take voluntary leave of absence. Millions of people have been evicted from their homes. And many, many others are threatened by this. Among the hidden impacts of this kind of reality we're living in now is hunger and food insecurity. People are getting less nutrition, many people, millions of people, than they were before COVID-19. Even before COVID-19, one in six people in our country, one in seven, I'm sorry, one in seven people, lived in a food insecure household, a food insecure household. Because of COVID's economic impacts and health impacts as well, 54 million people are threatened with food insecurity now, an increase that is close to one in six Americans. We know that this is a major issue in our country right now for people to have enough to eat. In a re recent national survey that I came across, 40% of mothers with children under 12 believe that they don't uh, have the food security they need for their children, that they have inadequate nutrition for their children. All this probably seems daunting, doesn't it? It seems daunting to me in a way, for sure. We may wonder, is there anything that I can do? We can feel hopeless about making an impact. However, we are people 
who have been called by the God of hope, the God who cares about this world that God created. And God is calling us to respond. We know about hope. Each Sunday we pray, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. And we pray, Give us today our daily bread. Think about that for a moment, my friends. What does that mean when we pray, Your kingdom come, your will be done? We know that daily bread is not just a loaf of bread. We know that daily bread means all that we need to not only survive, but hopefully to flourish in life, that life might be whole for all people, for us and all people. Adequate food that nourishes bodies and minds is something everyone needs. In the parable Jesus taught uh, this lawyer, we hear about um, the Samaritan who found this man who had been beaten and robbed. The priest, the Levite, and so on passed him by. But not the Samaritan. And who is my neighbor? Asked the lawyer, trying to justify himself. Jesus told the parable. The Samaritan took the time to stop, to listen, to look, to bind the wounds of this man after he had uh, poured wine, to disinfect the wounds, poured oil to loosen up the wound that it might heal better, bandaged him, took him to an inn. And the lawyer rightly understood who the neighbor had been. Pope Francis recently wrote an encyclical that has the title Fratelli Tutti, which I'm sure none of us know what that means, right? (laughs) Unless you've studied Latin. But it means all brothers. And let me share with you a couple of short paragraphs from the beginning of this encyclical by Francis, Pope Francis. By the way, he is, he's named Pope Francis after Francis of Assisi, who he admires greatly. This is the beginning of the Pope's introduction. With these words, Fratelli Tutti, all brothers, St. Francis of Assisi addressed his brothers and sisters and proposed to them a way of life marked by the flavor of the gospel. Of the counsels Francis offered, I would like to select the one in which he calls for a love that transcends the barriers of geography and distance and declares blessed all those who love their brother as much when he is far away from him as when he is with him. In his simple and direct way, St. Francis expressed the essence of a fraternal openness that allows us to acknowledge, appreciate, and love each person regardless of physical proximity, regardless of where he or she was born or lives. Continuing, the Pope writes, Francis felt himself a brother to the sun, the sea, and the wind, yet he knew that he was even closer to those of his own flesh. Wherever he went, he sowed seeds of peace and walked alongside the poor, the abandoned, the infirm, and the outcast, the least of his brothers, and sisters. Like Francis of Assisi, God's compassion compels us to go beyond ourselves, to look to the neighbor, to acknowledge, appreciate, and love each person regardless of physical proximity, regardless of where he or she lives or was born. Imagine if you had been born in another place, in another household, another family. Perhaps those of us gathered today have plenty to eat, a good roof over our heads, good clothing, a jacket. But imagine if you were born somewhere else, India, for for example, 
in a shanty town. Imagine if you were born in Appalachia, in one of the hollows, where people suffer from massive unemployment, the mines have closed, and you struggle to put food on the table for your children. We might know then the shame and the pain of not being able to feed our children adequately. Food that is necessary for their growing brains and bodies to develop normally. An impact that has a lifetime of repercussions. But by God's grace, we have the power and ability to act. Our faith calls us to action. Prayer is important but so is our thinking and our action. Now giving to the local food shelf, giving to Lutheran World Hunger Appeal for our projects that are around the world, giving to the neighbor, bringing a meal to the neighbor, all of these are important. They're essential and they're a blessed thing to do. However, all of our church organizations combined cannot equal the clout of our government when our government acts with us in cooperation with we the people. And that's why today we're joining with thousands, tens of thousands of people around our country, church, churches, Christians, people of goodwill, our Jewish brothers and sisters, writing letters to our legislators to urge them to make a difference in the lives of people that struggle with hunger and poverty. That's why we're going to take a few minutes today to write a letter or two or three to our legislators. They have a huge impact. Their decisions do. This Bread for the World is uh, nonpartisan. Uh, bipartisan, bipartisan, working with legislators on both sides of the aisle. And we found out that legislative aides say that even as few as seven or eight letters, seven, eight, nine, ten letters to a legislator, they start to track an issue and pay attention. In our time of divisive politics, this is one issue I think all of us can agree on, that hunger is something that is a tragedy that we should try to end in our country and around the world. It's something that shouldn't be there. There is enough. There is enough food for everyone. In Florida, this past August, during the August recess, about 40 people that our part of Bread for the World, went and visited with Marco Rubio in Florida, Republican uh, senator, who in that meeting expressed his support for increasing SNAP benefits as well as extending pandemic EBT in response to the pandemic. What is EBT? Um, EBT uh, is a electronic benefit transfer that benefits children that uh, are in families that are in school lunch programs um, during the summer since we've had this pandemic and it makes a world of difference that they can get more and adequate food. The virus that we're living with, the virus that is impacting millions of people around the world knows no borders. We know that right here in Morris, don't we? It impacts those in rural and urban areas from Morris to Minneapolis to Mozambique to around the world in the same way hunger knows no borders either. Hunger is not respective of borders. It impacts us here in Morris. It impacts Minnesota. It impacts the entire country and world. It impacts elderly people. It impacts children. It impacts us all. In the same way, our faith should not have borders. Our faith should not be uh, bordered by Morris or by Minnesota, but our faith should make a difference in the world that God loves. Many years before I came to Morris, I knew Dennis Johnson. 
I think most of you know Dennis because he's been a member of our congregation for 50 years. And we know Dennis uh, just died recently. Dennis was an inspiration to me before I came to Morris. He was the hunger coordinator for our synod for almost 20 years. Um, tirelessly working beyond his work as a dairy scientist at Rock, working, going to congregations to speak about global hunger, traveling to multiple countries with Lutheran World Relief, with our synod, um, with the ELCA. Dennis, as you know, worked hard on the fall dinner here, make sure that the lutefisk was well prepared and that there was plenty of lefts along with Carol and so many of you. But Dennis's energy and vision is part of the reason we're having this offering of letters today. Dennis was still active on our committee, evangelism and mission, even the month up until he passed away. Dennis was very supportive of this effort. One of the things that Dennis told, uh, told his family about was a prayer he learned and that they would pray, Carol and him, and when their family was together, their kids growing up now. But, um, and it's in addition to the familiar prayer, come Lord Jesus, that we know, come Lord Jesus, be our guest, let these gifts to us be blessed. The addition is, blessed be God, who is our bread. May all the world be clothed and fed. That's also a prayer that my family has used for many years as well. As we think about the world then today, we know there are many, many people suffering from the tragedy of hunger. And uh, when I think about that, I just know that it's wrong and that we can make a difference. <laughs> We pray each time we gather, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm certain that, it's not, that it is God's will to eliminate hunger, and it's not God's will that people die from hunger or are malnourished or struggle in that way. So may we today pick up our pens take a piece of paper that you are supplied with and may we take a few minutes to make a difference that could make a world of difference for hungry people in our country and around the world. Amen. I invite you to join in singing the song This Is My Song.
Litany today connects with our theme of letter writing. Please read with me responsively in the bold print you would come in. Lord Jesus, you became human to inspire us to walk in your light. Lead us on the path to your justice and righteousness as we advocate for better nutrition for a better tomorrow. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Christ Jesus, you remained divine to save the world from sin and liberated the oppressed. Forgive us for the unjust policies that prevent all people from living into your calling on their lives. Christ, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. Empower us by your grace to be bread for the world as we participate in the urgency of your mission to end hunger and malnutrition. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Christ Jesus, you call us beyond ourselves to love others as our neighbor. Unite people of faith, people of goodwill, and all elected officials as one body committed to the common cause of global nutrition so that all your beloved children have the chance to not only survive, but also thrive. Christ, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Lord Jesus, you sustain our advocacy with power, the power of your Holy Spirit. Inspire and equip Congress through our offering of letters with the political will to increase our nation's commitment and funding for global nutrition. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Please pray with me. O oh God, May these letters be a voice of justice which repairs the devastations of poverty for liberty which extends to those who suffer malnutrition for healing which binds up the broken bodied and the broken hearted for the bread that nourishes for all who experience hunger for the good news of love which is stronger than death and for the peace that strengthens communities and families together may we speak out as a collective voice for justice. Amen. I invite you to take in hand the, uh, the packet, the advocacy packet that you should have received. And within that packet, you will find that there is, um, and if you need a packet, raise your hand if you need a packet, and Steve or one of the ushers will get you a packet. Inside the packet is a white uh, one-page sheet that actually can uh, give us some direction about doing this. There's also a pen. You can, you can keep all of, all of the uh, material inside there uh, as well. Um, so there is stationary, there are envelopes, and what we want to do with this is uh, to write a brief letter 
doesn't have to be more than one or two paragraphs written in your own words. There's a sample on the back of the one-page white sheet that explains uh, the, just a, gives a basic sample of uh, the kind of letter that uh, we're hoping that you will write. And this letter, um, again, is intended to urge our legislators to address the issue of hunger in our country and around the world. Um, and there, there is a little more information in that sample letter that can guide you. According to Bread for the World information, one House correspondence staff person put it, 100 form letters have less direct value than a single thoughtful handwritten letter generated by a constituent. Also, it's your urge to write, we, we should write our uh, address next to our where we sign our name and add your email address so that uh, they know that you are a constituent of, you know, Stevens County of Minnesota. And um, request a specific action. Well, that's in the sample letter. There's a specific action right in there. So we will take a few minutes uh, to allow you to go ahead and write um, one or two of those letters now. I know it's windy out here. Um, but we will let's give this a try and um, if you don't complete one to all three of the legislators there are three names on the uh, on the back with the addresses there's uh, Re representative Colin Peterson and then senators Tina Smith and Amy Klobuchar but there's an address listed there as well um, right on that offering uh, uh, the uh, white sheet that you were given. And Deb's going to play some music.
Well, I hope your letter didn't blow away in this wind. It's, I know it's not an ideal day to be doing letter writing. We're, um, I invite you to take the material home if you didn't have a chance to finish all, all the letters. Um, I'd encourage you to consider writing one to each of those le uh, legislators that are listed on that page. And uh, you can mail those out. The stamps are there um, for you. And thank you for, for doing that on behalf of hungry people. Please pray with me. Gracious God, you have called us through your prophets and your son, Jesus Christ, to live out your vision of a world without hunger. Trusting in your love and mercy, we lift our prayers and voices alongside all those who suffer from malnutrition and its devastating impacts. We share your deep love and concern for all who experience hunger and poverty. We desire that all may prosper and be in good health. Bless these letters that our words may touch the hearts and minds of our members of Congress and embolden our elected officials to increase our nation's commitment and investment in national and global nutrition programs with gratitude for our nation's leadership in the world's progress in ending hunger we present these letters in the name of Jesus Christ the source of all our hope amen please stand let us confess our faith in the words of the creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will wait with our offering until you leave today. There should be plates available. There's one over here, over at the exit, and out as you exit today, you can leave your offering. We give thanks for uh, your support and offerings of our mutual ministry, we sing our offertory hymn, Create in Me Clean Heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit with Let us pray for all people according to their needs. God of life, we lift up your church throughout the world, praying that you would strengthen your people, strengthen your church in our response to your gospel, this awesome and amazing gospel of love, your love that has saved us and sets us free. May we respond with hearts of gratitude and in lives offered in obedience to your will, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for those many millions of people struggling with hunger, struggling with paying for their rent, struggling with unemployment, um, with COVID-19 illness. Dear Lord, we pray you would pour out your spirit upon this world that you love, that you would bring healing and wholeness an end to the virus, an end to unemployment and poverty. 
Help us to be agents of mercy, like the Good Samaritan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember, dear God, those people impacted by uh, not only COVID, but also by hurricanes in the southeast and by fires in the west. We pray your mercy and uh, your help for all those impacted, including those made homeless by fire and wind and storm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those organizations, Lord, including Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Relief, uh, Lutheran Social Services, churches and uh, groups and neighborhoods and people working to respond. Give them strength and wisdom in responding to these natural disasters. We also pray for medical personnel, for uh, emergency uh, technicians, EMTs and medics, um, nurses, uh, respiratory therapists, all those working with people that are ill, um, praying that you would give them protection and guidance. We pray for those developing vaccines, praying, Lord, that you would guide their efforts for the healing of the nations and pe all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh God, we know that our lives do not go on forever in this world, but at, one, at some point our life does end, and we're reminded of that as we lift up and remember those who have uh, suffered the death of a loved one in their family in the past week, including Bob Heck and family, Justin Anderson and family, Gene Richards and family. Um, may your comfort of the Holy Spirit uh, be with them all as we also remember the, the promise of resurrection life. We also pray for Mick Rose, Randy Hokanson, and all for whom we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we are mindful of our college students and uh, teachers, administrators, custodians, coaches, all those working, um, to, working so hard to uh, bring an education opportunity to young people. Bless our college, our schools, our teachers, coaches, uh, administrators, all those students also. Pray for your protection of them. Give them guidance. Give them patience and understanding and wisdom as they and, as they and we move through this time of quite dramatic change in how we do things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you'd like to share a sign of the peace with one another at this time, um, God's peace be with you all. We sing our sending hymn, Jesus is a Rock in a Weary Land. in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. My Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. No one can do like Jesus, not a humbling word he said. He went down, walking down to Lazarus
shelter in the time of storm when Jesus was on earth the flesh was very weak he took a towel and girded himself and he washed his disciples feet Jesus is a rock in a weary land a weary land a weary A shelter in the time of storm. Yonder comes my Savior, him whom I love so well. He has the palm of victory and the keys of death and hell. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary shelter in the time of storm. Thank you for your presence in worship today. Uh, remember that the olive wood carvings are available to look at and, to, uh, and for sale. Go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs>